So a land trust, all right, is, is basically a, a, a revocable trust agreement like a living trust. A land trust is comprised of three parties, all right? You have a trustee, okay? Okay. trustee, you're all probably familiar what a trustee is. And now I'm going to challenge you. It doesn't have to be an individual. It can also be an entity. I have a video. We'll put that in the show links. If you want to know just about trustees for land trust, I got a great video on that that talks about using Wyoming LLCs as a trustee. But the fact of the matter is in any type of trust agreement, you need to have a trustee. You also need to have a beneficiary. Okay. So land trust is comprised of a trustee and a beneficiary. And you have up here what's called a grantor. That is the person that, that creates the trust. So to create a land trust is you gotta have three parties here in that trust agreement that, that have, have come together. Now this could be the same person. I wouldn't always recommend that, but it could be you here, you here, and you here. So when we create this, what we're doing is we're basically setting up a legally recognized vehicle. Okay, I'm gonna to refer to it as a vehicle that can hold title to property, hence the word land trust. So it's a title holding trust is, is what, what a land trust is, all right? So when you're thinking about this, just think about it as title holding, meaning that it can hold title to your real estate like this. So what a land trust has been used for years, and I'm talking a long, long time, to hold title to real estate to get it out of an individual's name. Because we realize there are some uh, issues that come up with holding real estate, especially from an asset protection standpoint. You know, people know that you're on title. If they file a judgment against you, it would stick to your property if the property's held in your name. So by putting your property into a trust, you're removing it from your name, and you're then essentially making that asset, if properly structured, immune to potential judgments that are recorded against you in the county in which you live. So the trust itself is just a, 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 an agreement, right? It's something that's written up. It's not recorded anywhere. And so the terms of this agreement, this land trust agreement, think of like a contract that you're entering into to buy a piece of property from someone or to sell them some product. You specify the terms of that contract. Under what terms will I buy it? Under what terms can you return that, that item? And you list all those things out inside of that contract. Well, it's the same way with a trust. A trust is a contract. You specify how much control we want to provide the trustee, how much control we're going to give the beneficiaries, what rights they have with respect to the trust assets. And so, you can delineate all this in the agreement, when the, when the assets will be sold and how those funds would be distributed. All that gets put together in that land trust agreement. And the thing about the trust document itself is that when you build this trust out, it's completely private. Meaning that this document, unlike a limited liability company where you have to go to the Secretary of State and pay a fee to record it, you don't have to do that with the land trust. It's a completely private document. No one knows about its existence other than if they looked up title to a piece of property and they saw that it was held in a trust name. That would then clue them in that there's a trust. They don't even know that it's a land trust that's holding title to that particular property, but they don't know the terms under which that title is held because that trust agreement isn't recorded anywhere. Well, number one, why would I want to use a land trust? Because I don't want to hold title in my name like I've been talking about. So that's the first reason why I don't. So how do I do that? Well, I have to come up with a, a trustee that's not me. That's why if you watch my trustee video, I talk about using possibly a limited liability company as your trustee. And so that, that way it gives you anonymity so that if I took title that was once in my name that had Clint listed on it and I transferred into this trust and I call this trust the um, Funky Charlie Trust with uh, Blue Box LLC as its trustee. Now, if somebody looks at title to this property, they're no longer going to see my name. They're going to see the trustee's name and the name of the trust on title. So now I've just provided myself anonymity. So that's a compelling reason to set one of these up. So, so that's one of the main reasons why I think land trusts are extremely effective for people, investors who are, are flipping property using this type of document. Or if you're going to wholesale property, putting it together in a land trust or a wholesale trust so that you got the property tied up under contract. You know, I've done this a lot with HUD. You tie it up under contract in, in the trust name and then you kick the trust over to the investor. So now the 
seller cannot object to closing because they agreed to sell it to the trust. They weren't agreeing to sell it to the beneficiaries. You want to learn more about land trust? Well, come to my one day tax and asset protection workshop. I got a link below in the show notes. It'll take you there. It's completely free. I'll be teaching about how to set this tool up and how it can benefit not only protecting your residential real estate, I'll show you how a little change to this trust can also protect your personal residence. Thanks guys.